there were many questions in my previous video around how do we start generative ai how do we start learning generative ai in a good foundational manner not get carried away by everything that's happening but a pure roadmap that will help us navigate through everything that's happening and yet give us everything that we want to learn so here is this video let's start no fuss no technical jargons i'll give you everything that you require in this video that you should know in order to become a good generative ai data scientist engineer or whatever your roles are so let's begin The first thing that you need is a good understanding of linear algebra, probability and fundamental concepts of deep learning. These are those three things that you should master really efficiently. Now probability is something that is used everywhere across the transformer architecture. So you should know this a linear algebra with all the algebraic operations that happen with respect to vectors. All of this is the basis of a lot of systems going forward like rag systems use cosine similarity on embeddings. What are embeddings? Embeddings are vector representations of uh, keywords or sentences that you input. How is this cosine similarity uh, created? So start with probability, get your probability basics correct, get linear algebra sorted, especially vectors and all of the other nitty gritties that are there. Then you should also focus upon deep learning concepts like activation functions, uh, what is ReLU function, what is leaky ReLU, why are neural networks so popular, uh, how can they approximate any function that you want to kind of learn or uh, that you want your entire network to learn, how does this approximation happens, uh, what is bias, what is, how does the learning happen, all of these small details, small little details is what you should really know. Uh, so you should be really good with deep learning concepts as well. So that is my first recommendation. Get your mathematics base sorted. Uh, if you don't have the time to do everything, do at least probability, do at least linear algebra and also have a good base set up on deep learning concepts. Once these concepts are clear, the next thing that you should definitely focus on is the evolution of NLP. Not every task that you perform for an NLP operation requires the entire 4 billion, 5 billion, 10 billion models. One thing that I've realized with a lot of people that I've worked with and also a, a lot of people that I interview right now is for every task, the bare minimum that everyone wants to use is plug in a transformer architecture for simple tasks as well. But no one is taking into account three basic pillars, right? accuracy, latency and the cost of running the solution. When you think at scale and if your problem statement is not very complex, why have a big model deployed for a simpler use case, right? It is here that you have to understand which solution fits in which problem statement. So uh, start with regular expressions. If you have simpler issues to solve, uh, say a large language model can give you all the regular expressions that you're kind of searching for as well. Sometimes simple regular expression matches give you really good solutions for simpler problems. Uh, then there are predefined bird based classification models. So don't use a decoder only models which are heavy to load, heavy uh, in terms of getting the right JSON structure. Take some data set that you can synthetically generate using a BERT model and fine tune a BERT model based on the data set that you have. It will give you tremendous accuracy as well if you have like a really good representation of the data set that you want to use for inference as well. So that is the second piece that I can tell you. Start understanding what you are using and what requires or which problem statement requires a complex model, which problem statement requires a simpler model. For you to understand all of this, you have to understand the evolution of NLP. Start with simpler algorithms like TF-IDF, BM-25, how do they work, uh, what, what is the use case that they were meant to solve for. Then people shifted away from the simpler algorithms to LSTMs, before LSTMs was RNNs, then LSTMs came in, then transformers came in, attention transformers came in and then everything kind of shifted over towards transformers. So the point that I'm trying to land is, if you are clear with 
all the entire landscape of how LLMs or NLP has evolved, uh, so to speak, then if you're building a solution wherein uh, if you are expecting a latency of some milliseconds and uh, if it's a simple classification task rather than using a decoder only huge 1 billion 2 billion size model even that is a huge model if you ask me you can use a 100 million parameter BERT model fine tune it for your use case and you can get uh, sub 10 millisecond latency as well so understanding architectures understanding the evolution of NLP and then Judging that this particular problem statement requires a simpler solution as compared to a more complex model That is where you will kind of start uh, Appreciating the ALC value that you bring to the projects that is accuracy latency and cost uh, Imagine I have a simple sentiment analysis task and if I deploy a llama XYZ model which is 8 billion in size right so I'll require a huge high-end GPU infrastructure to just give out output outputs like positive negative neutral why can't I take a simple BERT model and currently there are uh, different BERT uh, architectures that have recently released as well right so you can take a look into those architectures because they've been fine-tuned or they've been trained on newer data sets which will give you much better base accuracy itself so why not look at those architectures for simpler use cases as opposed to using a very complex model for a simpler use case. So that is something that I want to land as well. Understand the entire evolution of NLP slash LLMs and then uh, be wise in terms of selecting which solutions to use where. Now you've understood the technicalities of which model to choose, where, etc. right? But you still have a basic thing missing which is understanding the transformer network. If there is one thing that you should spend good amount of time understanding is different architecture types, uh, encoder only models, decoder only models, encoder decoder architectures. Understand how they function at at least an over, overall level. Uh, understanding what positional encodings are, understanding how text is generated in a decoder only model, what do you feed in as input, what is the output that is generated, uh, is the output generated parallelly all at once or is it a sequential process, all of this is something that will give you immense clarity in terms of how the LLMs work under the hood. There are multiple YouTube videos out there, there are multiple blogs that explain transformer architecture in a very fine way. Uh, I would highly recommend whatever suits you, you can kind of go through all the links that are available right now. Uh, but my recommendation to you is get this basic clear so that when you interview for a role, it can be a senior role, junior role, you will have complete clarity in terms of the questions that are being asked to you and accordingly what is the response that you have to give them as well. So understand the transformer architecture in and out. Like this is, there is no shortcut to success. If there is something that I can recommend to you wholeheartedly, then you should know the different pieces of how the entire transformer architecture works. How does fine tuning work? What is LoRa? What is QLoRa? All of these are fine tuning techniques that kind of uh, have made a significant impact in terms of the training time, reducing the training time as well as reaching at the most accurate solutions that are out there. So you should understand the fundamentals of uh, how fine tuning happens, how are models created. You should also have a sense of how RAGS or retrieval augmented generation works. Now RAGS as a concept is uh, something that is very popular and a lot of people really don't understand uh, rags that well one of the reason why this happens is because uh, there are a lot of abstraction based libraries like right uh, so you have langchain llama index which kind of simplify the end execution for you but uh, when it comes to production deployment uh, very few use cases with these extensions like llama index or langchain make it to production because uh, Langchain or Llama Index add a lot of metadata into your LLM calls which is something that kind of hurts the end output in terms of the accuracy as well as latency. 
to avoid this you use base llms for rags when you implement them but not a lot of people implement rags uh, through base llms right uh, so this is one sad reality that i have kind of captured during the interviews as well so my only request to you is whatever topic that you are working on as well so if you want to work on rags for example make sure to understand rags in and out when i say in and out i mean you should have complete clarity of how the entire retrieval process happens what is the query embedding doing how is the query embedding searching against all the embeddings in my vector database what is picked up what cannot be picked up what is hybrid search in rag so whatever topic that you are working on make sure to understand the technical know hows of that particular solution if you are using libraries which kind of give you an abstraction of the overall solution in the long run uh, it's good for a poc right if, if you want to quickly churn up a solution create a solution share it with uh, 10 different people then uh, say a solution in langchain llama index is great but uh, if you have to go in for production deployment uh, when you use llms at a core level where you're only calling the llm api by passing in the chunks the query and then a prompt to kind of synthesize the response that is where you have complete control over the responses that are generated and accordingly you can kind of fine tune whatever parameters are going wrong with the responses so understand whatever you're building uh, understand the technical know hows of things there is one thing that i have also understood is a lot of people on linkedin and social media say especially twitter as well a lot of people who want to sell their products uh, have uh, or how do i say uh, create good post that fine tuning embeddings will not uh, give you really good accuracy for rags let me be very honest those people have never fine tuned a single model okay uh, there are so many people who have done some tremendous work in achieving crazy accuracy numbers with rag applications on domain specific data by fine tuning a base embedding model take your queries take your data set that is there Uh, fine tune your data fine tune a base embedding model with the new data set that you have or your custom domain specific data set that you have you will be amazed to see how good accuracy numbers are right uh, don't uh, follow influencers online blindly who have not really implemented things uh, this is other advice that i want to give you as well in this entire uh, generative ai llm road map don't trust people blindly uh, look at their uh, say body of work that they have done so far and then trust them that are they even capable enough of being trust trusted uh, that is something that you should look into focus on basics uh, there is there are so many things happening right so you cannot uh, go through everything that exist but what you should go through is a clear plan of understanding mathematics probability deep learning understanding the transformer architecture if you're working on rags then understanding rags if you're working on say text to speech then this is like a pure encoder decoder based models how do you fine tune them how do you generate good quality data sets that is where your focus should be uh if there are people only sharing advice online that you everything will be done using a particular large language model any large language model if you throw in input as garbage the response will be garbage however good the large language model is right you can use cloud 3.7 gemini 2.5 pro or gpts or llamas etc right whichever model you use essentially all of them boil down to the kind of input that you pass in and the kind of response that you generate so the other piece that you should also master is uh, once you've mastered all of this you should also master learning prompt engineering although prompt engineering is not very significant right now because you can kind of create prompts using using the llms itself but having a good understanding of prompt engineering to kind of get the llm to do what you want it to do is also an art which i believe you should spend good amount of time in uh, writing efficient prompts can bring out bring down the response times tremendously like there was a use case that i was trying to solve and initially i was trying to return the entire json output 
but uh, one hack that i tried was rather than returning the entire json and rather than uh, the llm doing all the heavy lifting in terms of generating the entire json i essentially wanted a list output uh, which is something that i could kind of later encapsulate in the json itself uh, which brought down the overall response time from 15 seconds to 2 seconds can you imagine a hack as simple as not generating the entire json to only generating the list values that have to be appended in an already uh, populated json could reduce my overall the response time from 15 seconds to 2 seconds so uh, when you work with llms right this is one approach that i also follow is you should think of a large language model as a special friend who will give you very curated responses if you ask the right questions if you ask it to do everything then it will not do everything as you want it to do right uh, which is where what you should be doing is you should be very specific with all the context that you can provide that should be passed to the large language model now what is the context that you pass in is where your prompt engineering or prompt creation skills come into picture there are a lot of courses online that people are selling on prompt engineering don't waste all of those money that you have right uh, on stupid courses on prompt engineering etc right uh, prompt engineering is something that is as simple as writing basic English language and modifying the English language so that you get the right responses. If you're confused with respect to generating the right prompt, create an approximate prompt that you feel would be relevant and pass it to the LLM that you want to use for generating the response and tell it to correct the prompt itself for you. So the LLM that you want to use will automatically correct the prompt and give you the right optimized prompt that you want to utilize as well uh, this is one hack that a lot of people use i use this personally uh, so don't waste time in learning prompt engineering from some random courses uh, that's pure waste of money uh, so this is something that i wanted to voice out i know the video is not very structured wherein uh, the roadmap will be given to you and point wise right do maths do stats and all of that I wanted this to be free flowing. This is like a one take video that I've created. I'll only edit places where I've kind of uh, messed up some words here and there, but most of the thoughts that I have are raw, uh, which is what I wanted to keep in this video as well. So that you kind of go back and understand what I've tried to deliver you in this particular video. So this is all that I had in today's video. Make the most of what you're learning. Try to understand everything from scratch and then uh, even LLMs or even creating a Gen AI roadmap for you at your level which will be much more simpler right so this is all that I had thank you so much for watching the video and uh, yeah thank you so much